Hey everyone, so this video is going to be about how to design a scrapbook paper cover, at least in a very simple way. You can design it however you would like to, but this is similar to what I do, and I just think that it kind of just helps make your book sell. And then also, I'm just going to show you a quick tip with Canva because I've been using this lately, and actually one of my subscribers told me about this, and it has been so much easier and so much better to use. So let's get into the tip first. So I have these two images here. They're just two random balloon images. And if you look right down the middle where they meet, there is a white line. It might be a little hard to see on the monitor, but I can see it here. And I don't want to have that white line because then when it prints, it's going to be definitely more prominent and my customer is not going to like that. So a way that the subscriber told me to fix it is simply clicking on whichever side it depends kind of what image you have. If it's an image that has more of like a background, then you're going to want to select the image that's in front of the other. And if you're not sure which is, then you can just position one forward as long as it has that white part that you're going over. So you just click on it and then use the left arrow key and now it's completely gone. So all I did was move it over and you can just use the arrow keys left or right. You don't want to go too far or else it looks a little weird. We don't want to go too far or else you have space in there now. So you just want to go with a perfect amount where it looks like there's no space and that it fits perfectly together. So I hope that's helpful. I run into this issue a lot with different designs. So I hope that kind of speeds up your process. It's definitely faster than my previous tip where you would do this and kind of crop it and then do all of that. But I found this to be a lot easier so I hope that's helpful so moving on to actually designing a cover I have two images here already just to save us some time but let's get a baseline here so let's go to elements and let's just get a rectangle because we kind of want to graph out where we want these to actually go so normally I would have the PDF of the actual cover template on here so that would kind of help me out as well but that's okay for this video I just want to show you how you can kind of do your own so let's get another rectangle here go and make it smaller we don't need it to be that big and I'm also going to center this so go to position and then Actually, I don't want to center. I want to middle it. There we go. And now let's add some text. We'll just do something simple like balloon scrapbook paper. You guys get the point. Obviously, I would make yours nicer than what I'm making this, but I more just want to show you how you can do the cover because I think this is really helpful. Um, for the customer. So I have two images here and what you want to do is get one PNG of each page of your scrapbook paper. So if you have 10 different designs and you want 10 separate PNGs downloaded, if you have five designs, 10 separate PNGs downloaded. So I only have two here, but we're going to pretend that they're different from each other and I'm going to use them as if I had five and then I'll explain what you would do if you had 10. So depending on the size of your cover and how many pages you have and everything like that, this amount is going to differ. And by amount, I mean how wide you have this. So see the numbers by width, it goes all the way up to like 585, can go wider, can go smaller. So you want to evenly space out every single image. If you're not sure what number you need to be at, a simple way to do it, what I do, is I'll take the square and I'm going to change the color so that way we don't get confused and I'm going to put it right up against where I want it so you don't have to have a color here if you don't want to have something in the spine so just figure out wherever you want your first image to start and go from there but then you go on the right side here just click it and then move it all the way across to the very end so this is 808 width 
So keep in mind there will be margins, but I don't really care if the last one is cut off a little bit, but if you do, then definitely account for that, but I honestly don't care. So what I would do here is I do 808 and I would divide it by whatever amount that I'm going to have. So if I'm going to have like 10 images, then I would do 808 divided by 10. And that's going to be 80.8. .8. And I would just round up. So I would do 81. If I have five of them, which we'll do here, it's going to be 161.6. So 162. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to put my image right here. I'm going to crop it so it's underneath the title. I'm going to go to 161. There we go. Or really close to it. Honestly, sometimes if I'm one or two off, I really don't care. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. But if you want to be very particular about it, that's perfectly fine. So we'll go to 161. And I would just repeat this the entire way down. Obviously using different images, not these exact same ones. So then if your image is above your title and you don't want it to be, you can just go to position to the back. Once this entire row is done, I would normally group these all together like this and then I would move them down so that way it looks like they're going down the entire page and I just think this looks really nice because then people kind of get an idea of what their book is going to or what the strap book is going to be like and again I would definitely be using different images I wouldn't be using the same ones over and over again like this but for the sake of this video I think you understand what I'm trying to get across and then the design would be the same on the bottom as the top, so it looks like it would just flow. So if you want to do 10, instead of having the same design on the top, same design on the bottom, you would have a different design on top and a different design on the bottom. I don't really recommend doing more than 10 because it just, I don't know, it just seems a little tricky and kind of hard to put it all into the cover here because I want the customer, or I want any customer I have to be able to know what they're getting. And if there's more than 10, it's going to appear very small on KDP, and they're probably not going to get many pages of each. So I don't recommend doing more than 10, but I think 5 or 10, somewhere in between there, is really good. So this is how you can create your own scrapbook paper cover. And again, you can do it however you would like to. I usually like to try to change this color to something that's already in the document. So you could go through here and pick different colors, or what I recently learned is you could go to this pick color from design thing and just pick a color that's already in the design. So I don't know, we'll just do that. And I would change it here as well and kind of just go on and try to edit it and make it look better. Probably adjust the font, probably add something to the back of it. But this is how you can create your scrapbook paper cover, and I really hope that this was helpful, and I really appreciate all of your support, so I hope you guys have a fantastic day.